Elias Pettersson is without a doubt the face of the franchise for the Vancouver Canucks. Yes, there was a time when a case could be made for Quinn Hughes, but to me, ever since Pettersson blew up onto the scene in his rookie year and won the Calder Trophy with an awesome season, he's been the face of the Canucks. And it's not just the shot, the one-timer, the hockey IQ, or even the points, but it's the fact that he's a centerman and he has one of the hardest jobs in all of hockey, being a number one centerman and franchise player for a hockey-crazed market. And speaking of that job, the hockey writers mentioned this week that it's possible that Pedersen could be waiting for Austin Matthews to sign his contract to kind of set the bar for Petey's money in term. Now, obviously Pedersen's not going to get as much as Austin Matthews because it's Toronto, but right now people seem to be positioning him between Matthew Kachuk's money and David Pasternak's money, which would put him anywhere between 9.5 and 10.25 depending on the season he has. But that's if he signs. And yes, right now, things still look pretty decent as far as Pedersen re-signing with the Canucks. But remember, he's already had one rocky contract dispute with them in the past. And if the Canucks leave him unsigned for this entire upcoming season and the Canucks miss the playoffs again, which is very possible, we could easily be looking at another Matthew Kachuk type situation with Pedersen as an RFA next offseason. And the people who don't want to believe that are in denial because Matthew Kachuk's first contract negotiation with the Flames was just as rocky as Pedersen, both of them missed the start of training camp and finally settled after a long saga. And now it's looking like Pedersen might walk into the final season of his contract unsigned just like Kachuk did. This is way more parallel than a lot of people like to say. And yeah, he says he's happy in Vancouver and he would love to stay there. Guess what? So did Kachuk. And if at the end of this season, the only playoff hockey that Pedersen's played was in the 2020 bubble in Edmonton, and the Canucks are still as directionless as they are right now, I mean, who knows? Are they rebuilding? Are they contending? Are they trying to squeak into the playoffs? Only Aquilini can answer that one. Of course, that really hampers a Pedersen extension. Like, that would ruin the Canucks if they lose their number one franchise star centerman. Those don't grow on trees. They're one of the hardest things to find in the entire NHL, right up there with a really good starting goalie. And after some of their recent moves, like the ekman Larson trade and buyout, the Bo Horvat trade, and the JT Miller extension at 30 years old, what do you do if you lose the one true superstar on your team? I mean, I guess you can always bank on the assets you get back in a Pedersen trade, but... Canucks fans, does Alvin's trading history really make you feel all that confident? I, for one, am hoping that the Sedins in their new roles with the Canucks can somehow work their magic to try to keep a fellow Swede and Pedersen around long term because, hey, I don't think the Canucks are making the playoffs this year, which is going to make it real hard for them to convince Pedersen to want to stay. Hopefully they can do it. Uh, I mean, it's a great city. Honestly, Vancouver is one of my favorite cities. Maybe that's a great sell point. It's genuinely one of the most beautiful cities in the world, which that's got it going for them. But uh, I don't know. We'll see. Let me know what you think about this in the comments down below. Is Pedersen staying? If so, for how long and for how much? And if not, where's he going? Like, comment, subscribe. I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.